Hi everyone, I'm Lori Halloway of the Meticulous Manicurist Nail Tutorials where I'm setting a new standard in nail education utilizing real life, real situations for real learning. And if you want to become the best at doing nails, then you need to subscribe to my channel. Next thing I'm going to show you is how to file down a myeloma or keratoma, which is a big callus on the ball of the foot. It's actually a protective layer of compacted skin. It's the body's defense system working to protect the area from damage or injury, and this client is prone to them because she has less cushioning tissue between the bones and skin of her feet because her toes are pinned and sewn together. And these large calloused areas need to be treated because if they're left untreated, it could cause a nucleated skin lesion, which is very painful. a separate full pedicure tutorial for this client with all of the toenail work and the toenail polish at the end in my video list so if you want to see the full pedicure tutorial please check that out at this stage or age whatever she just loves doing nails. So these two toes have been pinned and sewn together. So the body tries to protect the area because it doesn't have the right amount of skin or cushioning in between the toes or under the toes. So she grows this great big callus on the ball of her foot and we need to file that down. And I'm going to show you how to um, put your fingers on each side and spread the skin because there gets like a little lip on the edge that you need to get that filed off to. What did you used to play at being an esthetician? No, no. Mm -mm. But I always loved my mother's fingernails. Whenever we would sit on the couch, that's what I would do. I would like rub her her nails because they were I thought they were so smooth and soft. Did she, she used to get them as done? Like she she did? always polished them herself. herself. Yeah. yeah. Her nails were always, always polished. So when I became a nail technician she wasn't surprised. She was <laughs> like, you always loved my nails. Well I always I always had to keep my nails really quite short and I couldn't keep polish on them because of working in the operating room. You know, I had to scrub every day and uh, we weren't allowed as nurses to wear. Right, yeah. I mean, you might get away with a clear polish. Yeah. Anyway, you know, that's, that's how I know that my body's been stressed by this whole thing with Julie is that my nails have just splintered and broken you know, randomly, without any reason or cause, and, and I just think my body is just, you know, that's where the stress has been showing up yes. a lot. It all goes to your extremities, your feet and your fingernails first. Does it really? Mm -hmm. Just it. No, because the body wants to get it as far away from your heart and your organs as possible. That's why you get the crystallization of stress and the lactic acid in your feet. Because the body pushes the lactic acid, which is the stress. Yeah. Your body produces the lactic acid when it's stressed and it goes to your feet. That's why when I massage your feet, you'll feel those crunchy things and then they'll be kind of sore. That's what you have to break up and then drink a lot of water to have the body flush it out. Yeah. All right, let's bend this foot again. I'm going to work on those toenails again.
is down. He's just gonna watch cartoons. At urgent care, the night before he had vomited, and so we weren't going to send him to school, and we had no idea why he vomited. He wasn't feeling ill or under the weather at sure. all. So, um, so the next morning, I was home for the day, and I didn't come to work until two o'clock. So he was feeling just like run down, you know, he was resting on the couch watching cartoons and stuff and I felt like he had a fever and he did not. And then when Bruce got home from work, yeah. Is that my fault? No. Um, when Bruce got home from work, he felt him and he felt really warm. And so he took his temperature and it was 103. So he said he was going to take him to urgent care because I was still at work and I said okay and they said he's got pneumonia. We were like what? He had no cough. We just like I didn't understand how quickly that came on. So what antibiotic is he on? They gave him the zithromycin, the z -pack. He's 13. Okay. He turned 13 in February. Gosh, that's your baby. Yeah. <laughs> he's so sweet. And he's really lovey when he's sick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, aw. Well, he's always really lovey, but I guess he's extra lovey now that he's not feeling well. a restaurant on Jackson Road in on Saturday and Sunday mornings as a host. He's the cashier and he seats people. So does that mean he has to get up really early and get to work? He has to be to work by 9.30 on Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah. And he'll get his driver's license in about four weeks. Is he taking lessons or is Bruce teaching him? He's already gone through the courses. Just kind of waiting now. The He had to have all A's and B's on his report card in last trimester. He had a C. So we told him he had to wait. I probably didn't go down too well. You know, Evan is such a good teenager. Like, I'm such a lucky mom. He had no back talk, no lip, nothing. Wow. Lord. Nothing. He was just like, okay, mom. And then I said, do you think that you could try to get all A's this trimester to make up, to bring your GPA back up? And he goes, sure, Mom. <laughs> I'm like, you're such a good kid. Such a, such a well, good kid. Well, that speaks volumes about you and Bruce's parents, Lori. Oh, thanks. Well, you know, I, I think that well-brought-up children have been A's well loved. I think they have had very reasonable, consistent boundaries set for them. Mm -hmm. um, I think they have been respected as little people. And so, you know, what you give out comes back to you and usually tenfold. And uh, it, it's not just, it doesn't just happen that kids are good kids. Oh, thanks. I, I really feel it's a tremendous reflection, total reflection, of the parenting that they've had.
Well, we try our hardest to be good parents. So. But it's it's the hardest damn job in the world. It is. And they, they both uh, worked hard in the summers. They always had summer jobs. Um, you know, and they we lived five miles out of town. And so they both got their driver's license uh, when, as soon as they were able to. And they were very responsible about using the vehicle. And uh, we, set, again, set very strict boundaries about that, about when we could have it and that we didn't buy them a vehicle of their own the minute they turned 16. Right, no. no. Not at all. No, he has to. couldn't afford it for one thing. Yeah. And, um, and we didn't feel they needed it. So, um, Yeah, it's not like he's going to be out running around. He has responsibilities, homework, and sports and practices and stuff. What grade is he in now? He's a sophomore. What's he thinking that he might want to do when he goes? He doesn't know Not yet. yet. Mm -mm. Shedding on you. <laughs> Do you see him having any particular leanings towards careers that he that you think he might be good at? No. I have no idea what he's going to be when he grows up. Like, things come really easy to him, but he's so laid back. So, I don't know. He mentioned a few months ago about being an attorney. And I'm like, I don't think he's cutthroat enough to be an attorney. <laughs> but maybe, I mean, whatever he wants to do. Okay, I'll take this foot. He's just so nice. Well, that's a very competitive business. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, I mean, it's kind of something like real estate. You know, you really have to be a bit ruthless. Yeah, yeah. seen you since we had our real estate disaster. No, what happened? Our sump pump failed. Oh no, that's the, the sump pump under his arm. Oh! I said, John, how do you like just happen to have a sump pump in the in right. your house? He said, Inventory. Gail, he said, our sump, he said, our land is two feet lower than your property and we have a pond in the backyard and he said our sump pump goes 24 7. Wow. He said it never shuts off. So he said we go through a sump pump a year. I said well I mean I've been in this house 19 years. We may have replaced it once but maybe no more than that. He said yeah well he said they're designed to cycle on and cycle off. Right. And you don't need it on all the time but he said ours is just you know really works hard and uh so anyway, honest, it, it, because ours had been in the, in the hole a long, long time, I don't know how long, uh, but a long time, it was all corroded and crusted, and it was a bugger of a job to get it out of there. But he got it out and got the new one in, and by morning, the water had receded. But then, of course, all the carpeting was ruined, the, the wall board you know all the baseboards had to come off oh absolutely because four to six inches up so anyway i called our we have our homeowners insurance with triple a and they gave me the name of a restoration company and i have to say they were amazing they were out there by early afternoon and they had brought they brought big dehumidifiers and and fans and they set them up all, because we have a full basement under our house, you know. 
and um, they said there and there was water everywhere in every space at least four to six inches so anyway they they ran these heaters and not heaters uh, dehumidifiers Fans. and fans <clears throat> for four days day and night for four days and honestly, it was a miracle, Lori. By the, the the accident happened on a Wednesday night. They set up those fans Thursday afternoon, and they ran Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, and they didn't come back until Monday afternoon. But everything was just perfectly dry. It wow. was amazing. There was no smell or odor of mold or mildew or anything like that. Oh, that's great. So... Uh, we had paneling in the in the basement in the rec room and in the, the, the we've got a room at the back of the house that we really have just used for storage but it could have been a fourth bedroom or it could be a home study or a crafts room or whatever so it had been paneled and uh, there was carpet you know all through well my initial thought was that the paneling would all have to come down because it had been compromised. Yeah, because it goes up it, like yeah. soaks up the yeah. walls. But there was nothing, there was no drywall behind it to wick up the moisture. It oh. was just open air. So the air circulating got the paneling on both sides dry. Oh, good. Yeah. And um, so uh, my friend, John, the ace manager said well gail he said you know you've got two choices he said you can either pull the paneling down and put up drywall and paint tape and paint and then put the carpeting back down or you could uh put up drywall and tape and paint it so either paint the paneling or get rid of the paneling and put up drywall and then put the carpeting back down so i went to lowe's and i picked out carpeting and i you know locked in a deal where they would do free installation and blah 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 all this stuff here are some other great videos for you to check out thanks for watching and i'll see you soon